you did. We look in the mirror to see what kind of damage has been done through the night, especially us guys. We drool when we sleep. We've got to clean that up, fix our hair. We go to the sink and we wash. In the same way, God's given us a mirror so that we can see our hearts the way that God sees it. And we can see if there's something wrong, something dirty, something that needs to be fixed or cleaned. So what I'd like to do is to take a couple moments and look into this mirror very carefully. Now, I promise you, it might not be a pretty sight when you first look into it, but it's really necessary so that we can know if our hearts are clean before God. Let me ask you this question. Do you consider yourself to be a good person? Really good? If you do, whose standards are you judging yourself by? Are you good in your eyes by your standards? Or are you good according to God's standards? His standard is the Ten Commandments, so let's take a look at them. The Ninth Commandment says, you shall not bear false witness. It means don't lie. Have you ever broken that commandment? Have you ever told a lie in your whole life? If you have, that makes you a liar, right? You only need to murder one person and that would make you a murderer. If you tell one lie, that makes you a liar. You shall not steal. Have you ever broken that commandment? Have you taken something that doesn't belong to you even once? How about this? Jesus said, whoever looks at a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Have you ever done that? Have you ever looked with lust at another person? If you've said yes to those three questions, then by your own admission, you're a lying, thieving, adulterer at heart. And you have to face God on Judgment Day. The fact that you've gone to church won't get you off the hook. And that's only three of the Ten Commandments. Have you ever taken God's name in vain and committed blasphemy, using God's holy name as a cuss word? Have you always put God first in your life? Or have you broken the first commandment and created a God in your own heart or in your own mind that you're more comfortable with? If God judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, will you be innocent or would you be guilty? Remember, the Bible says, he who keeps the whole law and breaks it at just one point is guilty of all. If you're honest, if I'm honest, we know that we'll be guilty. So do you think you'll go to heaven? or hell, in light of the fact that you're going to be guilty. If you think you'll go to heaven, let me challenge you about why. Do you think you're going to heaven because God is good and therefore he'll overlook your sins? Try that in a court of law. Imagine you're standing before a judge, guilty of serious crimes, and the judge says all of the evidence is out. You're guilty. Do you have anything to say for yourself? And you say, yes, judge, I believe that you're good, and therefore you'll set me free. The judge won't let you go. He'll probably say something like, you're right about one thing, I am good. And because of my goodness, I'm going to make sure that justice is served. Because of my goodness, I'm going to make sure that you are punished. And so the very thing you might be hoping in, the goodness of God, will be the very thing that ensures that you are punished for your sin. Some of you might still be saying, but I'm a good person. Deep down, God knows I'm a good person. The problem is you're probably comparing yourself to other people. If you compare yourself to Adolf Hitler or a terrorist, sure, you look great. Think of it this way. If I could take a high-tech computer chip and put it behind your ear and it recorded all of your thoughts, everything you look at, everything you think, and everything you want, and it did that 24 hours a day, seven days a week for a month. If I then took those thoughts and desires and put them on this television screen for all of your friends to see, would you feel embarrassed? Would you feel ashamed? It's because your conscience is telling you the truth of what's in your heart right now. And the Bible says that is exactly what will happen when we face God. Each and every one of us will stand before God and give an account of our life and every secret sin will be brought out into the open and exposed. Nothing will be hidden before God. Even our own conscience, the Bible says, will be called forward to testify of our innocence or our guilt. Do you see the serious situation that you're in? The Bible says we have actually angered God by our sin. 
The Bible says that we are enemies of God because of the wickedness of our sin. That every time we sin, we store up wrath for ourselves that will be revealed on the day of wrath. That's why God commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in which he will judge each one of us according to his righteous standard. The truth is that you're really not a good person. I'm really not a good person. Jesus said there's only one who is good and that is God. That's why we need a savior. That's why we need Jesus Christ. God is merciful and he is compassionate and he doesn't want us to go to hell. That's why he provided a way for us to be forgiven. Put yourself back in the courtroom. You're guilty of a crime so serious that your fine has been set at $500,000 and you can't begin to pay it. Therefore, you need to spend the rest of your life in prison. You're being led off to your cell when all of a sudden someone you don't even know steps into the courtroom and pays your fine for you. Can you imagine how you would feel? The judge stops you and says, wait, someone has just paid your fine. You are free to go on the grounds that this man has made a payment for you. And the judge sets you free. Can you imagine how grateful you would be? How, how, how thankful you would be of what this person has done for you? Well, that's what Jesus Christ did for us. The Bible says that God sent his son Jesus Christ to suffer and be crucified on a cross to take the punishment for our sins. That's what the Bible means when it says, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed. We broke the law and Jesus paid our fine. That's why we need him. And the Bible says that if we will humble ourselves before God, repent of our sins, and trust in Jesus Christ, he will forgive us on the grounds that our fine has been paid. What does it mean to repent? It means to make a U-turn in your life. Turn your back on sin and head towards God. Instead of living your life your way, turn to God and begin to obey him and live life on his terms the way he designed you to live. And don't look back. To believe in Jesus means more than just intellectually believing that Jesus died on a cross. It's the kind of faith that you would have in a parachute if you knew that you had to jump 25,000 feet out of a plane. You would trust it with all your heart because you know it's the only thing that's going to save you. Would you just believe in the parachute or would you put it on? The Bible says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Please don't die in your sins. If you do, God will not give you a second chance. The time to turn to the Lord is right now. There is nothing more important in your entire life. You may be thinking of how important it is about who your friends are, who you hang out with, what you're going to be doing this weekend. Important decisions like who you're going to marry what you're going to do for a career. But all of those things pale in comparison to what you're going to do about Jesus Christ. Will you turn to him in repentance and faith? Surrender your heart to him and be saved from your sin? Or are you going to be like Pastor Bruce Barnes, a pretender? He finally came to his senses and got right with God. Please do that if you haven't already. Start to read your Bible every day and obey what you read and God will never, never let you down.